Hey, welcome back to Learn MoGraph. It's been a while since we've posted a video, but I think I have something really exciting for you this time. We're going to be taking a look at an updated plugin called Mask Prompter. It's an AI-based object masking plugin for After Effects. Since the last time I did a tutorial on this plugin, there's been some significant performance and usability features added to it, including text-based matting and different modes that can give you better performance if you have a lower performing CPU or GPU. So without further ado, let's jump right into After Effects here. Our first clip here is meant to show how Mask Prompter deals with low contrast, bright light, fast moving subjects. In this particular clip was shot on a Canon C200 at 120 frames per second. Um, so if we just go to reveal layer source and project, select it up here, you'll see that it is a 1920 by 1080 clip. So it's not the highest resolution, but it is 120 frames per second. So I kind of want to see how Mask Prompter handles having to compute and deal with all of those frames. So just like our first video we did on Mask Prompter, we're going to select our footage. We're going to add Mask Prompter to it. The first thing you'll notice is that it opens up all of the available options that you have to you in Mask Prompter. For this particular clip, we're going to be using the box method. Um, if you want to learn more about that, click the card in the top corner of this video and you can watch our previous video on the 2023 version of this plugin. So we're just going to close up points. We're going to close up text prompts, which we'll get to later. And we're going to close up negative points because we've covered those in previous videos. And the next thing we need to do for the box method is to select our footage and we're going to draw a mask around our dog. And if we press N on the keyboard, it reveals the rest of the clip so we can track our mask properly and make sure that it contains our dog in all points. And we're just going to add a keyframe at our first keyframe here. And we're just going to track our dog through this clip. Okay, and we're just gonna scrub back through our footage here and make sure that the mask contains our dog for the most part. And it does. There's a few frames where her tail goes out of the mask, but we're gonna see how Mask Prompter handles that. So I'm gonna find one and just stop on that frame. So we're gonna select our footage and we're gonna go back up to our effects controls in Mask Prompter and change our path from none to mask one and give that a minute to calculate. And Mask Prompter did a great job of selecting our dog, even with portions that were outside of the mask. That was something that I wanted to try on this particular version, because on the last version of Mask Prompter, you had to have the mask very close to the subject. Otherwise, any pieces that fell out, like if a hand or a leg fell out of the mask, it would not necessarily track it as well. And we're also going to take a look at the different models we now have available to us. So fast is the first model, and we can see that does a decent job of just broadly selecting our subject. There are some areas that fall outside of the mask um, that you can see here highlighted in white. So we're gonna change our mode from fast, and we're gonna go to high quality. And you can see that did a much better job of getting in around the edges and some of the fur on the edges of our tail and the edges of our legs. One of the other options you also have available is Detailed Mat. And Detailed Mat does an even better job of selecting all of the edges. Uh, but if we go to our output, and probably because this is a fast moving clip, and we go to On Transparent, we'll see that there is some ghosting and some additional details that we don't necessarily want there. So we're gonna ju just change this back to high quality. And that did give us a much cleaner look it is a little bit jagged, so we're going to go to post-processing and turn our edge enhancement up just a little bit to small. And now we have a much better, cleaner looking mask around this dog. Some of the other options we have down here, if you have a lower powered system or a more powerful system, you can choose to use or not use these, is hardware acceleration. We can check that on or off. And we also have use lower precision, which I do have checked on because I am on a little bit older of a system by today's standards. You can also crank up the amount of samples or computation tiles that Mask Prompter uses. Um, it is just a good thing to note that as you're using this and you're playing with these different variables, you may experience crashes. It may significantly slow down your workflow, um, all in the name of getting better, more detailed and accurate masking around your subject. So we're just gonna spot check this clip in a couple areas to make sure Mask Prompter followed through other than just that one clip. 
and it looks like it did a pretty good job. I think I'm just going to render this out so we can see what it looks like uh, without having to sit and wait for it to render. Our next clip here is shaky, it's low contrast, there's lots of movement, and it's a very quick clip. And this was shot on a GoPro, which is notoriously, in my experience, a more difficult codec to work with. And if we take a look at the properties for this one, we'll see that it is shot in 2.5K, so it is a bit higher resolution. There will be more pixels for Mask Prompter to analyze, um, but it was shot at 24 frames per second. So we have more resolution, but less frames per second than the last video clip that we worked with. And we're just going to add Mask Prompter and take a look at text prompts. So add Mask Prompter. Uh, we'll close up points and boxes. In text prompts, we're going to go down to add text input. And it gives you a default, Barbie world, not quite sure why, but I'm gonna rename that to person. And we're going to see how well Mask Prompter handles a text input, analyzing the footage and finding the person within the frame and then masking them out. So we're going to go up to our text prompt layer and select person. And we'll give Mask Prompter a minute to analyze. And I think that did a pretty good job relatively quickly. It was maybe five seconds of waiting and Mass Prompter took this two and a half K footage and a difficult to work with codec and it analyzed it and found the human within it. Um, you can see that it didn't do a great job of selecting all of the areas because we haven't given, ma given Mass Prompter the input that we would from the box based model. We're going to see if we change our model from fast to high quality, if that cleans up some of the areas that Mask Prompter missed around here. Oh, and it looks like it did. It even selected some more of her hair here. So let's see if we go to Edge Enhancement and turn that up to small and see if it gives us a cleaner line around her hair. Yeah, and that cleaned it up just a little bit. Um, some of these more wispy strands over here, Mask Prompter didn't catch, um, but that also sort of blends in with the background. And I don't think would make or break a shot if you were just trying to extract the person and have their hair be cut off there. Let's see if we change our text input prompt, if we can get Mask Prompter to maybe just select her goggles. Give it a couple seconds. All right, and that did a really good job of finding the goggles and the strap, which was kind of blending into the hat. And let's see if we can get Mask Prompter to also detect her coat here. So we'll go to Add Text Input, and we'll go to Coat. And we're going to change our text prompt layer to Coat. And we'll give it a couple seconds to analyze. All right, and that did a really good job of selecting her coat, but none of her face and almost none of her hair up until you get down here. And that's an easy enough task to clean up that and that edge of the mask if you were to do anything with this in post-production. So I'm going to skip a couple frames forward and see if it tracks her goggles and coat just as well. All right, so we've skipped forward a little bit and our mask prompter has stopped following the goggles and stopped following the coat. Um, let's see how this just handles it with one of the two. So we'll delete coat, make sure that it's not in our text prompter layer. And now we're back to just our goggles and we'll skip forward a couple frames to see how well it tracks just the goggles. And remember, this is shaky two and a half K footage. So there's a lot for mask prompter to analyze here. All right, tracking the goggles much better now. Skip forward a couple more frames. All right, and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. So just like the last clip, I'm going to export this so you can take a look. And that about covers everything that I wanted to go over uh, for the new release of Mask Prompter in 2024. This has become one of my favorite plugins to use for quick masking and matting work. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, I have a bunch more coming up. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when my new videos get posted.